Hello everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. So tonight we're going to be doing part 7 of the 1937 87K RCA radio. In part 7, uh, the first part of the video, I make a new belt for the tuning condenser and then after that I do the electronic restoration of the radio itself. The capacitors, resistors, all the rubber wiring, all of that's going to go. So without further ado, Let's get started. The belt, all stretched out, measures 12 and a half inches. And that's what we have right here, is our 12 and a half inch original belt. That is all split and rotten. So what I did, is I got on my 3D printer and I created a cutting tool that will allow me to cut a new belt to approximate sizes that I need it to be. So what I did is I went to McMaster Car and I bought a rubber square piece of stock that, I forget the durometer on it, I'll try and remember and stick it in my notes, but it's three feet long, it was basically three dollars, I think it was two ninety seven for three feet. It's three sixteenths of an inch square. My cutter here is made to handle the 3 16th inch square material. So my plan is that I'm going to pull it through here and split it to the thickness that I want which is going to be thicker than this. This is a corded belt. This is not corded belt so I want it to be thicker. So what my plan is I'm going to leave a little piece sticking out here it's made for the razor blade to go down inside there and smash through the rubber and go into a slot that I made down there. I hope I can get it in the slot. I think that's the slot right there. And then I should be able to pull the rubber through here and split it. Now I don't need to do all three feet, but I'm going to try and pull through here. Let me get on the other side of the camera. And I'll see if I can't pull this through here. Turn this at an angle so I can kind of get a better pull on it. Well, hopefully you're still on camera. So we only need a foot. We need 12 and a half inches approximately. Let's see what I got here. Nope, not quite 12 and a half. That should be at least 12 and a half. Yeah, and then some. All right, so now I need to cut that off which is what I got this cutter for. And there we have it. I have a thickness of belt that I want, which is about a little over an eighth inch thick, and a thinner belt. If I measure this out, I think I need to cut just a little bit more off. And it'll be pretty clear and close. You guys are seeing that. So I think if I cut that about right there, that is going to be about perfect. Let me do that. I'll do the final measuring and cutting after I get the belt size. So right now I got the belt thickness that I want. Now I got to run it back through and narrow down the width. So let's do that. I'm going to turn it back around this way this time, and we'll pull it back through this way. Now i got a belt that's about an eighth by an eighth. I need to pull this final piece through now, so I can get that last piece cut. 
I've got a nice 8 by 8 belt. Now I'll cut the final length to length and then I will super glue the end of it together and it should make a good belt for us. Paper thin sliver basically doesn't amount to anything. I think that's going to be the end that gets cut off anyway. So, Anyhow, I'd show you that. And there it is, all glued back together using some Loctite super glue gel. Seemed to work great. We'll let that set for at least 24 hours before I clean it up any further, but that's done. Alright, so I've pretty much got the outer portion of this chassis restored as much as I'm going to do. I'm not bothering to put this, the belt on here yet, uh, or the band selector, or the cover till I get the electronic portion of the restoration completed which I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm going to take it into the other workshop, put it back in the chassis holder, flip it over and we'll continue on with the electronic restoration. Okay so tonight we're going to be starting out uh, with the electronic portion of the restoration on this RC A87K radio and I've got my schematic up on the computer and on my big screen and uh, it just makes it easier for me to see stuff. Now I, I did do 11 by 17 which I'll be using off and on but I figured we could look at it this way too. So what I'm doing tonight is I'm starting in the circuit down here with the W5W4 tube and the transformer and this the power switch which is here and you know we've got the C31 um, filter cap the C32 filter cap I've got the candome resistors right through here I've got up here we've got our tone control switch and the C30 cap here which is the 0.017 I'm putting a, a 0.015 in there, 0.0156 is what I'm putting in there. Um, I've actually kind of got it stuck in there because I'm getting ready to show you kind of what I found um, down here with the power switch. So let's get you off the tripod and I'll show you that. Okay, so this was originally the C31 filter cap. And this is the one that somebody had added in here. And this is the negative, but it's not grounded. This is the one, one of the caps that has the gasket between it to keep it isolated. So this is the isolated neutral. And so they got one end of it tied here, and they've got the other end of it, bring it down here, tied into the heater circuit, filament circuit of the SW4, which is also tied into the transformer on the circuit, the green green circuit. We look back up here. So here's the C1. If we follow this up, it's on the T1 portion of the transformer, the green green, which is the filament for the SW4. So it's tied into that piece. And then that, of course that goes on up to the fuel coil and on up through there. But that's where I'm going to be working. But let me show you a couple things here. So in the process of looking at some of this and checking some of this out, I found out the tone switch, the on off and tone switch control was not functioning properly. So I had to take it apart, which I did, and I found it was broken. And I'm not sure how well you guys are going to see this. This all went together. There's other pieces to it, obviously. The housing, which actually is pretty worn. But this piece of the bake light portion here that spins, I don't know if you guys can see that, I got enough light on there for you to see that or not. But that's broken. This was sitting down inside there when I got it apart, um, along with the contact. So I looked at it to see if I was going to be able to fix it. I'm not going to be able to fix it. I'm basically going to buy another um, two-pole, three-position switch like I did on that Philco 41380 for my wife's nephew, uh, the previous 
restoration that I did. So we're kind of stuck now on that <clears throat> until that part comes in and it's like two weeks out. But it's a nice switch and, uh, and I didn't want to go cheap on it and it'll handle up to an amp so I think we're going to be fine. So we're kind of dead in the water right here. I'd already gotten my cap for the tone control soldered in down here and so now we're just going to float in there. But anyway, where I'm going with this, I'm going to start on this side, kind of like I did on the 41380. I'm going to work my way across uh, through the circuits and get rid of the rubber wire. This, there's a red, big red wire right here that actually runs over here. Probably can't see it. There's the red wire. It snakes over, connects to this tube here, comes up from there, and snakes on around all the way down here to the IF. And then I got yellow rubber wire through there, but I'm not going to worry about that till I get over there. So I've got some black rubber wire over here, and I've got the red rubber wire over here. I've already changed a couple of the wires here. I put new cloth wire, and that those go over to the antenna, uh, over to the antenna uh, terminal block. And I got a bunch of rubber wire through here that I got to take care of. So we'll start checking components. I'm going to start. These are the capacitors going to get changed, but I'll be checking the resistors and replacing them as I go. So let me get some of this work done. i got to figure out what I've got to replace this. I may have to install a terminal strip for it, but I'll get that figured out. We'll get some work done in here. I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I thought I'd show you guys where I'm at um, currently on this thing. I started over here on this side. And I basically just kind of work myself around. And I've changed a lot of wires, a lot of rubber wires. This big long red one here basically runs down from this tube all the way down here. That's replaced. Big black one. Same over here. All of the wires in there. All those rubber wires. I still got, I think, five wires left. This green one here, this green one, this green one, these two yellow ones. And then I'll have all the rubber wire out. I basically relocated my two electrolytics over here on this side, which is this one right here, which was C32. And this one right here, which was C18. And so I mounted a terminal strip here. And the components that were mounted to the C32 and the C18 are now mounted on this terminal strip as are the, the two electrolytics. These were both 16 microfarad uh, electrolytics. And so what I've got is I've got 15s in here. But this 15 measured out at like right at 18. I think it was 17.6 or something like this one. And this one measured out like 15.4, so I figured those are close enough that those should be fine. Over here, for this electrolytic right here, C31, I've relocated it right here. So I've got a terminal strip that I've mounted this to. I haven't soldered this one yet. Everything else is soldered, but I haven't soldered this one yet because I may still rearrange it. I'm not positive yet. I want to bring my power cord in here and utilize these two terminals here for my positive and my negative and then run a fuse which will be, I forget the type that's got the lead already on, I've got some but I can't remember what they call them. This the, the glass fuse with the leads on it. I'll wind up and run that up to my new switch and then I'll run the neutral how it needs to run and that'll take care of this piece here. Uh, as I told you a little bit earlier, I'm waiting on a switch that I have on order for the power and the tone switch. All of the caps have been changed. 98% of the resistors have been changed. 98% of the resistors were checking bad. I think I've only had two resistors so far that actually were, that were with intolerance. One of them was a big dog bone over here. I think it was my 5600K resistor R4. and it was checking okay, but because of the changes that I made here, it wouldn't reach. I wound up changing it anyway. So, at this point, I don't think that I've... I guess it's, I've got 90... The reason I say 90 is because i still got a couple more resistors down here on the bottom. 
that when I check them, I'm sure they're probably going to be out too. Now, when I say they're out, most of them that have been out have been out over the 20%. Some of them I've replaced were right at the 20%, but I'm like, hey, if I'm changing the rest of them, I might as well just change them all, even if they're at 20%, because they may still go bad in the future. So, that's what I'm, that's my line of thought anyway. Even these two here, these have been changed. I just had carbon comps that were new that I used there versus the metal film. This one here, this, this is a, a one watt. This replaced one of the big dog bones that was in there. Um, I think that that one was my R5, 15,000 ohm. It wasn't actually bad either, but again, because of the location wise, it was just easier for me to change it. That way I know I've got good parts in it. So right now, where we're at is I have got everything done to right here. And Larry from Back to Future Radios was nice enough to supply me two 3600 uh, MMF capacitors that uh, are required for the shortwave band. I haven't, I've got one in, I, the other one I don't have in yet. But these particular caps here, I, I tested each one, they're all out of whack. I mean, royally, majorly out of whack. And I didn't have these. So I'm getting ready to place an order with DigiKey specifically for these three and this one of these as mica caps I'm going to put in there. So really all I got left to do is put these five wires in, put those caps in, replace those two resistors, I've got to take the pot apart. It's 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 reading the two meg that it's supposed to be. I think it's like 2.2, but it's really flaky, and I haven't cleaned it yet. So I'm going to take the pot out and clean it, and then I got that cap there to change, and that'll pretty much do it from the electrical call it part replacement. I guess it's electrical restoration of it. But uh, I think I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty clean. Everything is doing really well. All of the uh, caps that I have changed pretty much went to chassis and I didn't want to disturb the solder points on the chassis so I clipped them and I, I used the pigtail method on all of them that went to the to the chassis and uh, I got these soldered back on these are for the tuning condenser so I'm in pretty good shape I do want to take the speaker connection and the, um, the eye tube harness and disconnect them and put some heat shrink around them where they go through the chassis because they are kind of cracked and, and uh, brittle and I want to shore them up so I've still got to do that which I mean I'll have to undo them two of the wires are undone here anyway I get that and then get the rest of this cleaned up inside here and uh, so things are going well I've been labeling I usually label these caps with their value but I decided on this radio, I'm probably going for it, I'm, I'm labeling them with their cap number for the print. And that way in the future, if somebody compares to the print, they can look right at it and, and see what the, what they got going on. So, anyhow, I, I'm pretty happy that it's, it's coming along. Slow process, especially all these wires. But uh, I'm going to replace the rest of these wires and get the, the volume pot out and see if I can do something with it. This particular volume pot actually has a tap on it, and uh, I'm hoping I can make it work. Because if not, I don't know if you guys can see this on the schematic. It's a two meg total pot R9, and uh, they've got a, a tap coming off of a section of it. And if I have to buy a new pot, it's not going to have that tap on it. So. I'm pretty sure I can get this thing cleaned up. I get it apart. As long as nothing's broken inside, we should be good. So, that's what I'm going to do next after I finish these wires till my final caps come in. Okay, so I got lucky. That pot was flaky as heck. And I um, didn't take it apart, but I sprayed it really good with deoxid inside and worked it really well a lot. And then I've let it set for two days. And um, I tested it on my Simpson 260 here, and it, it seems to be working really well. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. The interesting thing about this pot, and I'm glad that it actually worked okay, was it's a tapped pot. We can get on the schematic where you guys can see this. Here's the pot. 
right here. You can see my finger there. Get it over there. And it's showing us two meg, in it, but it's a tap pod. All right, and here's a tap right here at the 500,000 uh, ohm section. So it's a two meg pot. It's got a tap at 500,000. So let's check it and see what we got. I'm going to zoom in. You got the pot right there, but I'll zoom in on the meter so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I already, I already zeroed the, the meter. So let's go ahead. I'm going to, I'm on the R times 10,000 scale. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the, the tap. Okay, so there's the 500, 600, 700. So it's about 560. It's reading about 560. So the tap's about 560. So that's pretty darn close to the 500 that it said. Now let's take a look at the overall for the the two, the two meg pot. And we are reading basically right two meg. Exactly right on the money two meg. Alright, so now let's put it in the middle and see what our sweep looks like. Not bad. It's pretty, pretty smooth. Pretty darn smooth. That's why I like looking at the pots on a um, analog meter versus a digital meter. There's a hesitation right at 5,000, but I think that's because of that tap. So, it's awesome. It's perfect. Good. We can get it back in there. Alright, so here's where we are. I've got the wiring all done. I've got all of the resistors changed out except for the one in the iTube socket, which when I flip this up I'll work on that. I've got volume pot all back in. All the capacitors have been changed. Even the capacitors here for the IFs and the short wave band. Check the wave trap, it's good. And uh, the only thing I, I got left to do as you can see that's not hooked up. This is the tone control cap. I'm waiting for my on off switch slash tone control switch to come in. I've got my um, line cord, polarized line cord all installed here. Hooked up to my terminal strip. Got my U all knot. I've got the inline glass fuse I was telling you about. I still don't remember what it's called. It's like a pigtail fuse I guess. One and a half amp pigtail fuse is going to come up here to the on off switch. This is the wire, positive wire that's going to hook to the fuse that's going to go to the um, transformer. The transformer other lead that goes to the negative is over here uh, connected to the, my furnace just kicked in so if you guys hear background noise I apologize for that. So the neutral wire for the transformer is hooked up to the terminal strip here to the neutral of the line cord. So that's all done. The selector switch has been completely cleaned. And as I said, so all the wiring's done, all the capacitors changed, all the resistors are changed. And yes, somebody's going to say you shotgunned it. And the answer is yes, I did shotgun it because as I started checking all of the resistors, I was not happy with the tolerance. Most were above 20%. There were some right at 20%. And I decided since I have resistors that are 1% within what they're called for, I might as well put those in there. So that's what I did. Had I been checking them and 50% of them been good, then I would have been like, okay, I'll leave those. But I didn't. So at this point, I'm just waiting on this switch. I technically could hot wire it and check it. But what I need to do now is go ahead back through my schematic and just check everything four or five times make sure I didn't screw anything up I just went back through a couple of times checking all my solder joints and making sure everything was soldered I didn't forget anything and that was good now I just need to double check my work and make sure everything is connected the way it should be connected I got my speaker wire shored up I still have to do that to the iTube uh, harness if I decide I am going to do that uh, since it don't move once it's in there, probably not going to be too worried about it. 
I'll see what it looks like. If it has damage and needs to be repaired, then I'll fix that. But this will conclude the electrical restoration piece of it in part 7. So this is probably a good spot to end part 7. In part 8, we will get this thing fired up and see how it's going to work. So I'm going to end this here. I thank you for watching Greg's Vintage Workshop.